Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. Now in several recent videos I've been cutting gears and gear racks and so on and I have had to make uh, arbors. So this arbor, you may recall, was used to cut this rack when I did the job on the Bridgeport Mill. And I made another one for the gear. I haven't used that yet and that will also be used on the Bridgeport Mill. But now that the weather is moderating, I'd like to make a video, and you may have seen it already, as these may be out of sequence. I want to cut a rack on the horizontal mill, that is my little clausing horizontal mill. Now, this is the arbor that is used on the mill, and it is a one inch diameter underneath here. These are collars, and that's a number 30 milling machine taper. But uh, the gear cutters are 5 8 diameter bore that fit onto these arbors. So it's not going to fit onto this arbor. So the point here is I have to make an arbor for the closing mill and that is the subject of this video. Also in one of the recent videos I talked about the fact that you're very very limited on horizontal mills as to the length of rack that you can cut. Why? Because on the arbor here, uh, th this is the end toward the machine. You, you certainly can't go any farther than that. And then there's an arbor support, this is it here, on this end. So there's, you run into an interference, especially with the smaller diameter gear cutter. So uh, I will be limited even after I make this to a rack of approximately uh, oh no, five or six inches long at the very most. But it gets the point across to show you how to cut a rack on a horizontal mill. Again, these two large holes fit on the overarms of the horizontal mill and the brass bronze bushing here is the bushing that supports the arbor. And that is five eighths in diameter. So here is how I will approach this job. I'm certainly not going to start with a bar of inch and a quarter stock and turn it down to 5 eighths. That would take forever. So I'm going to use 5 eighths stock and make a series of collars. Now this has to fit into one of the uh, either collets. Again, in, this goes into the spindle, number 30 Morse, uh, not Morse, number 30 milling machine taper, MMT which is pretty standard. Now I could put a 5 8 collet in here and support it with with this or I could use an adapter this is a 5 8 so that's what I decided to do. What I do not like is that this is relatively long that is I might be telling you too much that you know that's almost two inches so I'm losing some a space compared to this. So that's going to be wasted space there where that set screw is. I would like to have that reduced but I'm constricted by that at least for now. I've already cut off and polished 5 8 cold roll steel, deburred it, faced both ends. Now this will fit again into this adapter really deeper than what I need. And since this is about 13 inches long, I may have to cut some off yet. I do not know yet at this time. But I will mill a flat for the set screw. Probably just go in maybe an inch and a half like that. Then I'm going to take this inch and a quarter stock. I'll be cutting it into pieces. But there will be a series of collars like this all the way along. And I don't know, I'll probably make them in two inch pieces like this, but some shorter ones also. That's a lot of drilling, a lot of chips to be made. But the end one here, which will be about a two incher, will be pinned to the shaft permanently. On this end, I, I will have to thread five eighths like this to tighten the whole thing up. But then I run into a problem that uh, how am I going to support it here because I do not want to put a thread into this bushing here. I want it to be smooth. If I put a thread in there like this for instance it's going to 
rule in the bushing, I believe. So you will see how I solve that later on. No sense talking about it yet. Wow, was it cold outside. I just went into the garage on my big wells saw and cut these pieces of inch and a quarter stock. Uh, just a random selection of them, which I will now face both ends and then uh, drill uh, 5 eighths. I don't believe there's any need to uh, ream those. They'll be accurate enough. I'm going to tell you something that you probably know, or maybe it doesn't matter, you don't need to know it, but the actual arbor under the collars, such as this, is not necessarily straight. And even if it does get bent, and it often has a curvature in it because a keyway has been cut into it, and that causes stresses and all that. But anyway, the whole idea on the original collars right here that you purchase is that they are ground such that they are perfectly parallel. I mean perfect, so that when you draw up the nut, even if there is a bend, it would straighten it. So I want to make these reasonably accurate, although for what I'm doing here, and it's just a one-time job, probably doesn't matter, but I just thought I'd share that information with you. of real quick tips while I'm still here at the lathe. There were quite a few bit changes here from a center drill to a quarter inch to the final five eighths. So that makes my hands sore with a regular wrench like this, especially with that sharp end on there. So I've showed this before. My brother gave this to me, but he just modified a regular chuck key with a piece of half inch aluminum rounded on the end. I think it's held on with Loctite, but it gives you the leverage and reduces the pain. Another thing that uh, I want to point out while I'm here, see how much easier that is? Rather than using a 5 8 bit with a taper shank, because then uh, it's a matter of uh, changing tools and all of that, uh, sometimes I like to use a step bit like this 5 8 -er, but they tend to slip in the chuck, and this one, if it will show up, has flats on it. So I like that one real well. Okay, I made up eight bushings here, sleeves, whatever you want to call them. Hopefully I got everything I need, but I may have to alter the lengths or use some more. I don't know yet. The uh, tool that I was using for facing was this one. This is my first time to use it, and it did come from Banggood, and yes, it was free. There's the number, but I sure do like it. Not just because I got it free either. Did a nice job. I'm at the mill and I'm putting a flat spot for the set screw on the shaft. And that's about 30 thousandths deep. All right. And that'll tighten down like that. And then I'm going to take this bushing, which is eh, two and an eighth. And that will be the end one that's on permanent. And I will drill a 3 16 hole and drive this 3 16 roll pin in there. I'll have to cut it off to length.
I'm not quite sure what length I need, so I'd rather make it a little longer. That's why you see I'm about an inch longer here. I waste a lot of time like that, but now maybe one more sleeve and then the nut, but I'd like to thread basically all the way from the end till to right about there where I put the mark. And then remember, and that'll be a 5 8 fine, which is 5 8 18. After that, I will have to turn down a portion of this to go into the pilot. Now, well, all right, let me hold off and, and talk about that when I get there. Next job here is to thread. All right, I'm cheating a bit. I've already wasted, I mean, spent two or three hours on this, so I, and it's a temporary j job, a throwaway. But I'm putting uh, two inches of thread on there, five-eighths, fine. And by cheating, I mean I'm going to single point thread it uh, to about three-fourths depth, and then I'm going in there and finishing it off with a, with a die to the final size, just to expedite matters. While the work is still in the machine here, I'm going to turn down one inch long to half inch diameter and that'll be the pilot that will fit into this little bushing. So that's half inch. Perhaps you're understanding now why I made the pilot on here because I did not want the thread to ride in that bushing. So this little oil light bushing which is 5 8 on the outside and half inch on the inside will be pressed into there temporarily and then when this job is done out it comes. So I'll do that now off camera. Okay the thing we're going to do next is take a little field trip out to the other machine and to, to see if this is going to fit up all right or if I have to make modifications. Now one other thing that needs to be done is for a keyway to be put in but I'm not sure of the location of it and it will be a 5 16 uh, keyway. I won't uh, make it full length but that's one of the things I'm going to do on the field trip is try to decide where that goes because during this whole rack cutting operation that is in another video, more than likely I will have to move the cutter at least one time, let's say from this position to perhaps that position. And of course we've got enough other bushings here, I hope. Yeah, there we go. And probably need one more. And let's go on out. See you in a minute. I should polish these up. I don't know if I'll be in the mood. All right, you're on a field trip, whether you like it or not. And we're in the garage here at the Clausing Horizontal Mill. And it's warmed up a little bit here. First week in March, it is 60 degrees in this unheated garage. This machine has only five inches of travel in this axis. So I put a dummy piece five inches long of key stock, half inch key stock. I've got the cutter in there. Now I'm not going to make this today. This is just the arbor. But with it in that position, and you can see that it can be a problem touching here. 
if I raise the table too much, but I think I've got the clearance that I need there without actually measuring. And then moving all the way out to this end, Of course, the last tooth won't be right on the end, but you can see that I have the reach that I need there, but just barely, and it wouldn't be another tooth or two, and I would strike right here. Now, you're going to run into the same problem on a large milling machine if you want to cut a 10, 12, 15 inch rack or something like that. You will always have some limitation because of what I have just talked about here. Also, I mounted the vise lengthways, that's not the normal way I keep this Kurt vise on here, but it looks pretty good, doesn't it? Almost like it was uh, made that way. And the overarm support here is probably almost at its maximum travel in this direction. And my pilot bearing is in place and I think that this will be a pretty sturdy setup. So what I believe I'm going to do, rather than just as I told you a few minutes ago, I'm just going to put a pin in here for the, uh, the key rather than a straight key, just to speed things up. Because again, I'm only using this once and I put an awful lot of time into it already, plus the video. But I believe that I've got a setup where I am ready to cut a rack on a horizontal mill to supplement the previous one where I cut the rack on the vertical mill. Okay, you shamed me into cleaning up these sleeves. They look a little better. And I drilled a hole and drove that uh, 5 30 seconds pin in there. Actually, that's just a short piece off the end of a drill bit, so it's hardened for what it's worth. And then you can see that we got a keyway here. That'll keep it from turning. And one, two, three. Get that tightened down. And the job is done. And this is tight. Got a pin in there. So it looks pretty good, doesn't it? If I dare say so myself. As opposed to a regular arbor. Probably, you can see it's a little bit longer, but it's not going to make any difference. All right, hope you liked the video, and be sure and watch the other videos where I cut racks by two methods and make the pinion gear and then make them together in a piece of aluminum to mock it up so you can see what a rack and pinion looks like and how to make them should you ever need one, which is highly unlikely. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now, and I'll see you in my next video, I hope.